Hi, today we're going to, to learn how to map with gouache. Gouache is kind of an opaque colored watercolor. So you have to think in terms of what you're going to have lighter and darker. Uh, you won't use the white of the paper as you do with watercolor. First thing I suggest is that you get a cold press illustration board. It has a good tooth. Uh, the hot press is too slick. And mark it out where you're going to put your drawing. What I've chosen today is a little bird. and we start with this, keeps a clean surface. You want to leave extra on the side to test your paint. The method that I use to put this on the illustration board is a transfer method with your tracing paper. That'll keep the lines very clean. Now what I've done here is to mark out lights and darks so that as I put my paint down I will work in certain areas with a certain color paint. Right, so now we're going to look at how to use gouache. First thing you want to remember is your materials. I always have two glasses of water, one to clean the brush and one to mix so that I'm not mixing dirty water into my gouache. It's important with gouache to keep in mind that you need to keep the colors separate and pre-mix them so you can add them as you go. Now I've drawn with really dark lines but you may want to stay away from that. Maybe lighten up your lines once you've traced it uh, onto the illustration board and that way you won't be able to see the lines as you paint. But as you can see it, it kind of covers most of that. What we want to do with gouache is we want to think in terms of the order that we add the paint. From back to front is a good rule of thumb and from light to dark. You can always add darker paint on top of lighter paint. So what I've done is I've pre-mixed some of our paints for us. I don't know if you can see this here but I started with white and I laid that in and then I have the second darkest color. Now I'm going to add the third darkest color. The consistency that we have here is similar to half and half cream. Um, and so you can see that I've tested it over to the side and now I'm going to start to, to add my color. I always have a paper towel to wipe off uh, in case you have mistakes. I'm going to start to lay in and you'll notice that you want to work kind of quick. Even if you go up to the edge of where you started, it is dried enough at this point that it won't blend into it. Gouache has good qualities in that it dries very quickly. This can work for you or against you. Um, when you're working in a mapping method is probably the best because you don't have to worry too much about having to blend the paint. If you find that your paint starts to get a little bit dry, just kind of dip your brush in either the... In this point I have water that's not that dirty, but you want to stay away from using your dirty water. The other thing you want to keep in mind is that because gouache is the type of paint that um, dries quickly, it dries in a layer that allows it, if it gets too thick, to crack. So keep, keep from having to go over too much. Once you've finished an area, keep moving. Uh, when you have an edge that stays wet, it'll blend nicer. Now pre-mixing the paint and saving that paint is a good idea because of the fact that if you need to touch up, you have your pre-mixed paint. It's almost impossible to remix paint after the fact and add into it. So as you can see, I've, I've covered this area pretty quickly. Um, if I need to blend some areas, I can add a little bit of water. It's not going to change the color. Once it dries, it will be the same color. Gouache has a tendency to dry a little bit darker than originally when you mix it, so you want to test that. Um, as, as you can see here, though, it's pretty easy to lay down the gouache. It's a nice consistency. And what you'll do is you'll have areas that give the impression of shading but are totally separate, almost like paint by numbers. So now you can see that our project is almost finished. The very end of the project is where you start to add the little details that you want. You can go back and refine it a bit. Don't try to redo big areas unless you're going to do the whole area. This is because you can't add old paint onto new unless it's the exact same color. If you want flat areas like we have here, it's best to just do the whole area. I'm adding details with my darkest dark, going in, adding some little areas that I, I see need to come up a little bit more in their, in their value. You can do the same thing if you're going to add some highlights. Go with your white, for instance, his little eye. We can put this in here. And just put the dot of eye on this. In this case, if I wanted to go back and add some more details with my ink, as long as my paint isn't too thick on the, can on the board, 
I can add details with ink. It can also add some details with color pencil. And that's what I find very interesting about gouache is that it's very versatile. You can thin it down, use it as watercolor, you can use it in op opaque, and you can use it with other medias. Well, hopefully this gives you some insight into a process that you can use. There's many others. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this, and it's helpful.